Hi everyone. We're speaking about our minimally invasive focused ultrasound for neurosurgical treatments from the lab to a startup and beyond. My name is Amir Mambachi. I'm an assistant professor at Johns Hopkins, very passionate about inventions and translation. Hi everyone. My name is Neo Gamo. I'm co-founder and CEO of Neurosonics Medical and the vice president of business development at the Maryland Development Center. And my background is in academic research in neuroscience. Today, we'll be talking to you about a miniaturized focused ultrasound device that hopefully can help neurosurgeons treat brain tumors. It is a minimally invasive uh, device, and we hope that it's both safe and efficient. There are around 700,000 people in the U.S. living with brain tumors, with around 80,000 new diagnoses per year, and around 167,000 of them are surgical candidates who may be able to have their brain tumor removed through surgery. The standard of care for surgical treatment of brain tumors is a craniotomy, which is a highly invasive procedure in which a portion of the skull is removed to expose the brain to allow the surgeon's access to re remove the tumor. However, this procedure comes with risks of infection, bleeding, incidental damage to healthy brain tissue, and prolonged post-operative recovery. Thank you, Neil. As you guys heard, this is such an important mission um, and such an important cause because brain tumors are devastating. And to that end, there's a lot of competition out there, which is healthy competition, um, but nothing really out there is uh, working for the needs of these um, patients. Um, some of the technologies that are out there, for example, you can see three different columns here. There's Visualase device by Medtronic. Uh, there's a NeuroAplate, uh, and there's Exaplate Neuro by Inside Tech. Um, so for example, what you see on the first column, Visualase by Medtronic, it's a laser tissue ablation device that goes through a burr hole and so, for example, on the middle panel, middle um, bottom, like you see the blue picture, um, this laser uh, tissue ablation device goes through a burr hole to the you know, uh, brain, and it has to pass through the brain tissue. That's a lot invasive. And because it's an optical setting, it actually has to go just all the way to the site of uh, treatment. And so because of that, there's a lot of healthy tissue that at risk uh, here. Um, and it's also expensive and it has to work with MRI. So um, it's a great system. However, there is room for improvement. Uh, similarly for other systems, whether it's like the device by Monteris Medical or Insight Tech, people usually think about these devices uh, as, you know, especially when it comes to athlete neuro, like the focus ultrasound, they think of it as a non-invasive system, a helmet device that's meant to uh, do incision free surgery. So you don't open up the skull and you can do surgery. It's a very innovative uh, device by an innovative company. However, when it comes to brain tumor treatment, it just doesn't work yet. So it works greatly for Parkinson's disorder, essential tremor, uh, epilepsy, functional neurosurgery, um, and it sometimes even have FD approval for a lot of these uh, applications. But when it comes to brain tumor, because the sound has to pass through the skull. It's about one centimeter of the skull and about 90% of this uh, energy gets lost and attenuated as it passes through the skull. So only about five to 10% of the sound passes through the skull. So we really have a limitation in terms of getting the right sound energy and deposit in the right place. This goes especially uh, the case if the tumor is not in the center of the brain and if it's kind of like on one side. Uh, we still have difficulty training brain tumors with this innovative device. As much as it's innovative, there's room for improvement. Some colleagues may argue that a lot of these um, brain and tumor patients already have surgery. So why do we even need a non-invasive? So to that end, we thought of our solution, which is being commercialized by Neurosonics Medical. So it's still a focus ultrasound device, uh, aligns well with the mandate of the focus ultrasound uh, foundation. Um, these patients are getting burr holes anyways. We're talking about a dime size burr hole, uh, for example, 15 to 17 millimeter. It's tiny, it's small. And our thought process is that if 90% of the sound that has to pass through the skull gets attenuated, then why do we bother when we are already having brain uh, tumor um, burr holes? So the thought process is that let's use ultrasound, what ultrasound is best at, focus the sound a few centimeters away, and take advantage of the fact that we are already having bare holes anyways. So here's our solution. It's a minimally invasive focused ultrasound probe that can target anywhere in the brain 
You can steer anywhere you want, and you can focus up to four to five centimeters from the tip. The focal point starts at four centimeters from the surface of the transducer, and it extends all the way to five centimeters. The treatment lesion is about a grain of rice, two millimeter by 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter being the axial dimension. So on the left-hand side, you see a beautiful illustration by our uh, phenomenal medical illustrator, Professor Sook. And what you see really here is that the fact that these brain tumor patients already have the burr hole, and they already have these test tubes, um, something that looks like a test tube, and um, for minimally invasive surgeries. So why not taking advantage of that? Why not placing these ultrasound transducers inside that test tube, trocar device, and the device is not touching the brain tumor at all, and the only thing that passes through the healthy tissue is sound, it's a safe sound, and by the time it reaches the tumor, and actually the sound converts to heat in a nonlinear acoustic fashion. And you can remotely focus four or five centimeters away when you want to ablate the tissue or treat that lesion. The beauty of this is that if the tumor is specifically, specifically if the tumor is um, non-operable, inoperable, then you can focus the sound where it needs to get operated because you can't reach that tumor. However, what you can do is that you can open up elsewhere, place that trocar, place the ultrasound transducer inside that, and focus removably to where you need to treat. So talking about the trocars that I mentioned, the code and code test tubes, uh, we work closely with one of our um, closed industry collaborators called Nico Nero. And one of their flagship products is called BrainPath. These are the test tubes that I was talking about. Already they have FDA approval, already a lot of uh, brain tumor patients that are getting surgeries, they love minimally invasive because it's less bleeding, less infection, less time for recovery, and they can be up and running faster and aesthetically it's much better, much nicer. So it's already well adopted. Why not taking advantage of that? Why not instead of an open surgery, uh, open skull surgery, why not using the minimally invasive toolkits uh, and use the brain path to insert our transducer? And you can see on the right-hand side that our device, our alpha prototype, it's an ultrasound guided ultrasound therapeutic device can easily fit into the brain path. And then again, focus the sound where it needs to. That's our solution. What you see here is a second version, a beta prototype of this device. Blue here is our therapeutic ultrasound. It's much more miniaturized than our first prototype. So it fits nicely within that brain path and allows for other things uh, to be inserted in an endoscopic fashion. And again, everything on the left-hand side are the value propositions for our device. Because we do it in a minimally invasive fashion, there's a reduced risk of infection, shorter operating time, reduced risk of functional damage, shorter hospital stays, faster return to normal activities, and improve aesthetics. Let's talk a little bit about our current state, what we do in the lab, and then following that, Dr. Gama will talk about what happens in the real world, translational uh, activities. So in the lab, again, we've finished our first alpha prototype, and we have shown that minimally invasive therapeutic ultrasound is viable approach. It's worthwhile thinking. Because before people, as soon as they would have heard Insight Tech, they would have said, well, non-invasive is a go. Why are you even thinking about creating a bear hole? But then again, if sound can't pass through the skull as much power it needs to treat brain tumors for this application, we're already creating that bear hole. Why not taking advantage of the minimally invasive toolkits like BrainPath? So this is a paper that we recently published in the journal Ultrasonics and was featured by the editor as one of the picks, highlights of this journal. So what you see on the left-hand side is two designs we considered. From a research perspective, um, fundamental physics of acoustics, we like larger apertures. So the larger the aperture, the better the energy deposition. So ideally, we would love to have had the real state so that we could have a ball, um, a large ball here. But unfortunately, we don't want to have a brain scoop. So what we're doing here is on the left-hand side, uh, we're trying to see what sort of a design works in that minimally invasive fashion that can still fit through that brain path device. So left-hand side was one design. And for many fundamental acoustic uh, reasons, it didn't work. So we moved to the second design on the right-hand side uh, green means ultrasound guidance, ultrasound imaging, and yellow means ultrasound therapeutic. Design two ended up working pretty well. And instead of having a 
again, brain skill, we have a tiny little device that can be inserted into the brain path and it can work. So I uh, encourage you guys to look at this paper. Uh, you can see how we looked into how this thing works um, in tissue mimicking phantoms like solid water phantom. And we're grateful for our, another company collaborator called Sonic Concepts. Carl Morrison and the team have been helping us out build this device, not only the first one, but also the second one. And I know they're a great collaborator to uh, focus ultrasound foundation. So we hope working together, the combination of startups, the combination of established companies like um, BrainPath Nico Nero, and also the combination of working with ultrasound transducer manufacturer companies like Sonic Concepts, we hope we can move forward fast into the translation world. Thank you, Dr. Mambachi. So after Dr. Mambachi worked for several years on this project at Johns Hopkins, we decided that we wanted to try to spin out uh, this company and commercialize the device. So at that point, we teamed up with MDC, which is a startup studio in downtown Baltimore focused on building health and med medical technology companies. So together, we worked on the technical development, fundraising, and business development in parallel, and uh, created this company, Neurosonics Medical, to, to commercialize our device. So one of the first things we did when we founded this company was to get out of the building, get out of the lab, and try to really understand the market needs and what the customers want. So we traveled all over the country and performed over 200 stakeholder interviews, including with over 130 clinicians. And we hold down on our primary customers who are the, uh, the value analysis and purchasing committees, as well as neurosurgeons at neurosurgical centers at large bed size and teaching hospitals. So the US market for minimally invasive neurosurgical devices is increasing and is expected to reach almost $60 million in the, by the year 2028. And indeed, hospitals are shifting towards minimally invasive procedures. We estimate a target addressable market of around $998 million, including over 5,700 neurosurgical centers in the US. However, we initially focused on around 1,200 hospitals that treated the most Medicare neurosurgery inpatients over the last several years, and we estimate a serviceable addressable market of around $216 million. So far, as Dr. Mambachi has mentioned, we've designed, built, and tested uh, actually three versions of our early prototype. Um, and filed a non-provisional application, and we've raised over $500,000 in grant funding to achieve this. We are currently uh, preparing for cadaver testing of our latest prototype and uh, preparing for a pre-submission meeting with the FDA to confirm our regulatory pathway and clinical trial uh, design. Over the next couple of years, we're preparing to perform preclinical study to uh, determine the safety and efficacy of our device in a live animal model. And we'll also perform usability study with neurosurgeons. And then we'll take the findings from those studies to move forward with design for manufacturing. And we're looking forward to launching sales, uh, performing clinical studies, regulatory clearance over the next several years. Thank you. Thanks to you, the Focus Ultrasound Foundation, Sonic Concepts, Nico Nero, and all of the wonderful, phenomenal neurosurgeons at Johns Hopkins Neurosurgery Department.